Hey, I, I want to talk about, uh, you know, sometimes we, sometimes, uh, uh, we focus on the wrong thing and we miss the forest for the trees. When we talk about a story, it can happen to any of us. And, um, there was an incredible series of videos from New York City in which hundreds of proud boys, this right wing group, committed a crime, an infraction, we can call it, for which black teens in New York City, for lack of a better term, and I saw it have, you know, but when I was on the subway all the time pre pandemic, I would see it all the time. Um, Black teens will often get arrested by NYPD for doing something that hundreds of proud boys did over the weekend, which is they jumped the turnstiles. They went in through an exit door on the subway and literally nothing happened. Um, I'm going to play this video here for our video audience. And you see that there are just dozens and dozens and multiple videos of these proud boys um, on the New York subway. And someone says it's open. And then you start to see these guys pour in through what is supposed to be an exit door. This is called jumping turnstiles. You're not always literally jumping turnstiles. Very often it was like as I was leaving, I would push open the exit and people would slip in. And you see them here. Now, uh, civil rights attorney and longtime public defender Scott Heckinger tweeted about this and said, as a public defender, I represented literally hundreds of black men and women accused of doing this. Most literally couldn't afford two dollars and seventy five cent subway fare. The difference between eating and not eating for them arrested, caged, forced to plea to the crime of theft of services. But when you're white and proud, right, um, these proud boys, at least in these videos, exclusively white. So is it only a racial issue? No, but there's a big racialized component to this. And the turnstile jumping used as a justification to detain young black men on the New York subway is a story almost as old as the subway itself. For a comparison, we do have video of how New York City police deal with some of these other folks. And we have video we're showing here where you see a group of police officers. They are determined to find the turnstile jumpers. And um, as we follow the camera, you see multiple officers get on a subway car. And they start uh, they actually pull out tasers in this case, and they're pushing around one guy believed to have been turnstile jumping. And it's it's really depressing. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight officers and a scuffle begins. Anyway, you guys know the story. You guys know the story. So this is just another one of these cases where we see it and we say, what what is going on here? What is the explanation here? And why are there just dozens and dozens of proud boys pouring in the exit door, jumping turnstiles and everything's very, very calm? Uh, you tell me if there's a different explanation. I'm glad to see it. But this is a classic classic that I witnessed 10 times, I guess, dozen or so times when I was on the subway all the time before the pandemic. Just haven't really been using public transit since the start of the pandemic, um, but something very much uh, to, to think about. Interesting, just little tidbit from the Proud Boy protests over the weekend. Let's take a quick break. I do want to talk about Ron DeSantis after this short break and a bunch of other things. Glad you're with me today on this shortened Thanksgiving week. 